was very fortunate as a, a fellow after completing my training to uh, land in a lab in Boston uh, directed by Dr. Joel Abner, a uh, very well-known member of the Endocrine Society. And uh, this was the early days of molecular biology. The glucagon gene has just been cloned. We saw these sequences in the gene called glucagon-like peptides, and uh, we didn't know what they were, where they were made, what they did. And those were my projects uh, really in the very early days in the 1980s to say, what do these glucagon-like peptides do? And, and starting with GLP-1 and just being at the right place at the right time helped launch my career. Yeah, so I was very lucky. I had two mentors uh, as a medical student. Uh, one was Charles Hollenberg, who was a very well-known Canadian academic leader, also interested in adipocytes and obesity. And the other was Jerry Burrow, uh, originally from Yale and then head of endocrinology and later medicine in Toronto, who was also a, a clinician scientist endocrinologist. And they both encouraged me to try research. I was an MD. I'd never worked in a lab. I was sort of all thumbs. Um, but the, the influence of these mentors, I think, strongly encouraged me that a career in research might be something I could try. And the only way to find out if you like it and if you could possibly do it is to really invest the time. And, and that's what I did as a fellow in Boston. So, you know, the, the GLP-1 story is really a, a team effort. Like in Boston, uh, my research supervisor, Professor Joel Habner, was instrumental. Very fortunate to work with a, a research chemist, uh, expert in peptide chemistry, Svetlana Mosel. At the same time, uh, very similar experiments were being done in Copenhagen by Professor uh, Jens Holst. When I returned to Toronto, I started a collaboration with Patricia Brubaker, another member of the Endocrine Society who is an expert in peptide hormone biology. And, and there have been literally, you know, hundreds of people who have contributed very important chapters to this story and still do today. So, you know, I think Hillary Clinton reminded us that it takes a village sometimes and uh, research is really no different. To develop new medicines takes hundreds, if not thousands of people with different skills to bring the medicines to the marketplace. And that really is the story of GLP-1.